Welcome to the first of what will be many project breakdown videos. We're going to take a look at some cool Web 3D projects, sometimes with a theme. We'll see where it goes. Please let me know if there's something different that you'd like to see, different format, different kind of projects, whatever makes sense. When it comes to the tutorial stuff, if you haven't noticed already, there's a separate tutorial series that actually goes into step by step how to make these kind of things. But in general, these videos are just meant to inspire and give you cool ideas on what you can do and what is possible in Web 3D. Here's a very cool project called Lullaby City on Code Sandbox IO. I have it credited for Paul Hinchel who runs on the React 3 Fiber stuff, but it does look like he credited it to somebody else and then that was somebody he ported it from. I did try and go to their Sketchfab file and I, I don't think it's online anymore. Uh, but I'll have links to all of these projects in the description. Real quick, let's look at how this was put together. First, we have a very simple uh, project in general. We have our canvas, which is our general start of things. The model, which is just the basic whatever's imported from a 3D app and then a fog. In addition to that, inside of the model, model is usually where everything was imported from like a, like a GLTF JSX process. But you can see this one has a rotation in the use frame. Use frame is something that happens for every frame. And this one does the slow rotation. One of the things that I like to do when trying to figure out how a project is made is I want to divide it into its code and its model. So everything inside this model pretty much is done inside of a 3D app like Blender. And what I did is I downloaded the GLB separately and loaded it up into this GLTF viewer by Don McCurdy. I've talked to him on Discord, very helpful person and this is a very useful tool. So you can see here that it's a really low poly model of you know, a city. So at a city scale, low poly isn't so low anymore. I'm not sure exactly where this file came from, but it looks like something you might get from one of those geo libraries. And then a material is placed on it to have this gradient effect from corner to corner. But there's not a whole lot here, but you can see immediately that when you take this 3D file with that gradient and then you do rotation, you're gonna, that gradient is going to create a neat effect, which is what we get in the code sandbox. What I love about this project is it looks like something that is, because it's so monotone, you could put it in like a background of a website, have it like a title in front of it, like for a banner and it would, be very fitting. It's not going to be overly obnoxious as an effect, but have this really cool effect in the background and enhance whatever you're presenting in the foreground. So imagine it, even if we stayed with the city theme, if this, if you had a city themed site of some sort and you actually used the skyline of that city as your banner background, that's, that's next level stuff. That's, pretty awesome and it could be somewhat subtle people might just think at first hey this is you know a fancy effect applied in the background then when they realize oh this is actually the city that this site is about that would be pretty amazing just with a few added things onto the 3d file and some creative use this has an overall ambient or immersive quality to it that uh, I, I can really appreciate in addition to the visuals, this file also has audio added to it. I do recommend going to it, taking a look at it. This is called Lullaby City. So, you know, kind of like one of those music boxes where you would open it and the character spins around. It's like you are the character spinning around to the, to the music. Here we have a scene for a stadium. It is really impressive as an environment. We can go to a full screen view real quick. So this just uses the orbit controls. You use your mouse, you click around. 
But one thing that's interesting is that the orbit controls have been locked to not allow you to go vertically. So you feel like you're still sitting on this ground plane. You can see that it has a uh, HDRI loaded as the environment, which definitely made this feel more realistic. And we are going to take a look at how this was put together. There's quite a few things here that aren't normally, that they're not just created from like the conversion of the GLTF to JSX. One thing we have these controls here, and these are the Leva controls, L-E-V-A. Fairly easy to plug into something, but creates a neat interactive widget here to do, you know, to plug into just about anything that you want. So you can use these controls for managing distances, rotations, and in, in this example, it's showing materials. We've got our usual model, which is divided into a court and a floor. And that's because the court is everything but the floor and has its materials. Here we have the floor. And the floor has these interact has this interactive material. Right, here's the court. And in the court, it just has some stuff for shadows. Here we've got the court and the floor. And then we've got a few lights. Right, these lights could be could have been imported from another app. And there's an ambient light, it just gives a little bit of a, a general lighting, and then the fog. And it looks like this purple fog is, is used to just give things a, a bit of a tint towards the ceiling of the stadium. If we take the 3D model and we pop it into the GLTF viewer, you can understand a little more about what was created in a 3D app and imported, and then what was done inside of React 3 Fiber in order to turn it into an interactive project. So here you can see that we've got most of the textures and you know the 3D model. And what's really missing here is the, the lighting and the environment map or that HDRI. So when we take that 3D model, you apply that HDRI, you know, a few other of the small things that are added here, the lighting especially, it really brings it all together. You can, it now it feels like an immersive environment. And imagine using this on a web page where clicking on different things, maybe with text labels on them or something, give you different interactions. Imagine doing this for a basketball sports team or a, a fan site or something where maybe the rotation happens automatically. There's different things that are interactive. You could have basketballs bouncing around on here that, there's really no limit to what you can do on this compared to a, a flat traditional website. Pretty impressive environment here. So here we have a little Minecraft proof of concept. It doesn't use a bunch of imported 3D models, but you could replace a lot of this stuff with it. Instead of 3D models, it's it has primitive geometry that is loaded from the React 3 library that you know ports over to 3JS. But take a look at this main file, how, how concise it is for what it allows. Our canvas is usually where we start. We, we understand everything from a canvas point of view. It's everything that's inside the canvas is our 3D models and everything. But what's wrapping the canvas is these keyboard controls that give you this player control, the WASDF type stuff. So this allows you to move around as a character, as well as you can still pan up and down, look around. It really gives it this little game feel. That is done by these key mappings. That wraps the canvas. In the canvas, we have our camera designation for using shadows. Sky, which is its own tag. We'll never get this from like Blender or something, but it's easily added afterwards. We'll Talk about that in lighting. Ambient light, it's something easily added that just gives you, it's you know your general lighting, and then a point light, which is something that could be imported. Next, we have physics, which allows things to stick to a plane and not collide. And then we've got our ground, which is as simple as a plane, plane geometry. We've got our cube, which has the box geometry, but beyond that, it is, you know, here's your physics for the rigid body and 
it has some logic for when you click on it, what it's going to do. And, you know, in this case, it duplicates like it would in Minecraft. Then our X uh, looks like this one was actually imported from a 3D file. And then our player, which has a little bit of a little bit of logic to it, but it's not it's not too scary. It's similar to all the other things that we've seen. Considering how much this allows you to do in such a small file, pretty impressive. Imagine replacing the Minecraft stuff with your own models, your things that you're interacting with, maybe your own weapons instead of the ax. You can use this ground plane, have whatever environment you want and still have like these player controls within a website. As always, thank you for joining me on this video. Feel free to join us in Discord. Leave a comment. Let me know what you would like to see in future videos like this. I hope to see you in the next video.